Mosher from the Inside the Birds podcast, building an empire over there. Jeff Mosher, what is going on, man? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Very busy, man. You should see this place. It is packed right now. With, I can uh, hear it. Would be or hopeful, we should say, uh, hopeful winners is what we have here. Ninety nine hopeful winners, but uh, we hope the Eagles win. I talked to Bob Papa in the last hour, and a lot of uh, you know he admitted a lot about this Giants team really on some hard times right now. So I want to start off with this: Are the Eagles at the point in this particular game with this particular opponent that you should expect to win this game? Well, I think they should expect to be favored in the game. It's a division game, so you always, for whatever reason, division games are never, they never seem to go according to script. But I do think the Eagles are they're obviously, um, well, I don't know if they're going to be the favorite. I haven't seen the line. I know it's at New York, so I'm not 100% sure what the uh, line is right now. I think the Eagles are playing better. Uh, I don't know, though, that if you just look at the 53 of the Eagles and the 53 of the Giants that you say that one team is definitively better than the other. That's where things like momentum and coaching and uh, injuries come into play. And the Eagles are obviously have the momentum. They have fewer injuries, although they've got a few that could really matter in this matchup. And, and clearly their coaching has been a lot better uh, than the Giants coaching as of late. And that's why you saw a coaching change. Yeah, and uh, we'll get into some of the injuries and all that kind of stuff here. By the way, Eagles are favored by three and a half. So you're a three and a half point favorite on the road all of a sudden, uh, how things have changed really quick here. So let's look at some of the matchup situations in this game, Jeff. I want to get your opinion on one. Eagles won the run the ball, obviously. I, we think now, do we, okay, let's start with that. Do we feel confident in saying that's what they want to do? Are they committed to that? Yes. I thought Nick Sirianni made an interesting point about getting too conservative, though in the second half against the Saints. And he said, yes, we, we want to run. That's what we do. But it doesn't mean that we don't want to throw. Uh, the second part of that is, Mike, Jalen Hurts, you have to, uh, you should, he, I'm sure you listen to his press conferences. He's very, I don't want to say he's sensitive, but he doesn't like the idea that this is considered a running team. Even when he was talking to the locker room, we're a nasty team. That's our identity, not necessarily a running team. He doesn't want it perceived, and no quarterback does, that the offense is a run-heavy, run-first offense, even though that it is. So at some point, we've talked about this uh, yesterday and, and even last week, at some point there's going to be a time where the Eagles do have to throw the ball more than 15 to 20 times yeah. to win a game. It could be this week. So with that, you've got Philadelphia wanting to run the ball. With their offensive line, one of the areas that is healthy, even though they are down two starters on that offensive line, they have the same five guys together for the next last couple of weeks. How do you see the Giants being able to stop this running game? Ooh, you're asking me to predict what, what's sort of unpredictable. Um, I imagine that the Giants well, might do they be... Well, do they have the personnel? The mm -hmm. Saints, we thought, had the personnel to maybe give you a challenge. This is obviously a step back. So if Philly wants to run the ball, seemingly, Jeff, they probably should be able to. Yeah, I would think so, but I do think the Giants will... Um, will try to do something different. I think at this point you have to. When I, what I, when I mean that is you, you probably will see an opponent try to play more five-man defensive lines, uh, a five-man front, which is sometimes called a, a bear front. Um, they've got a lot of run stoppers, actually, to be able to do that. A guy like Danny Shelton, they've got Dexter Lawrence, Austin Johnson, Leonard Williams. Those are guys who are good defensive linemen. And um, well, obviously when you throw an extra defensive lineman out there, then you're either short at linebacker or short in the secondary, and maybe you're not in nickel, and you have to ask your guys to cover a little bit better. But I, I would tend to think that you're going to see that kind of adjustment where the teams, the, the Saints did not sell out, and, and they probably felt that they were good at stopping the run. They were the number one team, and they shouldn't have to. And um, they probably look at some of the tape and think they should have done some schematic things differently. But I don't think the Giants are going to make that kind of um, mistake in thinking that they can just – play their normal defense and stop the run. Right. So then in, in, I guess the next question would be Dallas Goddard is a big part of the offense, and the Saints were a team that were pretty good against the tight end. Uh, if the Eagles want to throw the ball, who's the guy who has the best situation to be a part of the offense? Well, ordinarily I wouldn't say um, whoever's, you know, James Bradbury lined up against, but for whatever reason he has not had as, as good of a year as he's had in the past and certainly as he had last year. Now, maybe that changes within a def different defensive structure. 
Um, but, you know, you would think Devontae Smith would have a pretty good matchup against him if that's how, how it is. Uh, again, you, you know, you mentioned Dallas Goddard should be there. But at some point, there's got to be that third guy, whether it's Quez Watkins, Jalen Rager, Greg Ward, J.J., Ortega, Whiteside, Hightower, anybody, someone, whether it's a running back catching passes. I, I don't know who it's going to be, but at some point, I think they're going to need another option to uh, present itself in the, in the passing game. Yeah, J.J. is now a part of the game plan, apparently, right? Well, I guess I have to put him in there since he has more receiving yards than any of the other guys I mentioned over the last two or three weeks. I actually wondered when they showed the aerial shot of that play on television, I was wondering where he was lined up at and almost was half thinking, are they are they having him lined up as almost like a tight end? You know what I mean? Like, where were they putting him in the offense? And, of course, he was lined up uh, kind of hidden in the slot over there. It was, it was a sneaky, nice little play. Yeah, they have been lining him up in the slot lately. Uh, they just have been doing that when they run because he's a big body. He's the biggest body they got a wide receiver. I don't know if you caught it, but two weeks, was it two weeks? Yeah, the Denver game, Adam Archuleta accidentally called him a tight end. He called him a tight I end. I did not and, hear that, uh, no. Yeah, kind of, it was funny. There were, there were some Twitter poking fun at it. So, um, yeah, so that's basically been his job. And, you know, he obviously, that was an RPO, I think, where they, they caught the defense off guard and threw it to Arthega Whiteside. But someone's got to step up and, and make more plays for the passing game. And it's going to have to happen at some point. Yeah, and, and I, we touched on this a little bit yesterday, but I guess we can expand on it, is are they not making plays in the pass game because they're, the receivers are not making plays or are they just not being called on to make a lot of plays? Well, that's a good question. All I know is that I can tell you is that Nick Sirianni, going back to like the first three weeks of the season, has talked extensively about sometimes you have to call plays for certain players. It's players over play calls, right? And he's talked about having specific play designs for certain players, meaning you schemed it up. You know, you know you're going to face zone, so you run specific, maybe a flood route, something specific where you know a guy should be open against that zone. And you say to the quarterback, this is where the ball is intended to go. Let's do it, right? And they've got to, I think the offensive staff has to do a better job of calling on those kind of plays. I also think it would help them to, even though that they've found their kind of identity lately, running out of the shotgun to spread out the defense, right. it would help to go under center and work play action off of that look, draw the defense in, and be able to hit someone across the middle, whether it's Rager, whether it's Quez Watkins, um, to, to force that issue there. You know, the, if you remember a couple weeks ago, they did that. They, they came out with three tight ends and one wide receiver. The one wide receiver was Quez Watkins. And they obviously just ran the ball in that situation. But maybe next time you do that with Quez or Jalen and you throw the ball in that situation, and there is no other outlet. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, they, they ran that, what, um, you know, 13 kind of personnel with Jackson, Stoll, and Goddard. Like, they were running yep. the three of those guys bunched together. And I and I, it's funny you say that, that Watkins was the guy on the field because at that point I'm saying, man, I'd like to see them kind of use, you know, have him jet sweep the one way and have the three tight ends blocking down on the other side. I, It was weird. The game plan that they used in Atlanta is almost like they ripped that page out and just threw it away. Well, that's because they tried to do it the week later and a week later, and, and everybody was onto it by then. That was like seven or eight screens. Remember they opened up that first drive against Atlanta with three consecutive swing passes to Quez Watkins? Watkins. Yep. Yeah, so you can only get away with that for, for a certain amount of time. But I think Kyle Shanahan is really good. At, you just mentioned misdirection. One of the things the Eagles did really well uh, a couple of days ago in the run game was those what you call pin pulls, where you have maybe the center and the tackle or the guard and tackle pull left, but you can run the ball to the right. It's a misdirection play where you get everybody on the defense flowing one way, but the ball is actually going the other way. You can do that in the play action game as well and easily get a guy open just yeah. leaking out on the, the misdirection side just to get the ball in his hands. You know, Detroit, first series, it's different, but they gave Jalen Rager three carries, if you remember. And he averaged, I think he had... He was averaging like 11 yards of play on that because he was catching him off guard, and then he, then he hurt his ankle, and that went away. But I, I feel like they've got to go back to doing that a little bit more and diversify this offense. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's look at John Gannon's defense. Uh, the Giants have a new offensive coordinator. I don't know how that changes things. But when you look at the Giants and the Eagles' defense, that matchup, what 
personnel would make you say, this worries me? Looking at what the Giants have offensively, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Eagles personnel, you're John Gannon. Yeah. What on the Giants personnel do you say, that worries me? Well, first of all, first of all, right, I, I'm concerned about I may not have Darius Slay. So that's a big concern right now because to, your, to answer your question, the Giants have perimeter weapon, weapons. Now, Kadarius Toney, I believe, was limited today. We'll see if he's going to be able to play. If he plays, he's a tough matchup. He's silky smooth, good route runner, explosive for a rookie. So he's a scary guy. Sterling Shepard's also been on the injury report. We'll see if he can play. Kenny Galladay is a tall physical receiver. So those three guys right there, uh, and then you want to throw Evan Ingram in, a very fast tight end who could have ended a game against yeah. the Eagles last year yes. if he just caught the ball, right? Uh, those four guys right there, Tony, Ingram, Shepard, Galladay, and then you add Saquon Barkley. I think that this team has infinitely more weaponry, right, than, say, the team they just played, the New Orleans Saints, who really yep. had almost nobody. So that's what – you look at the Eagles, right, Mike, and you knew – even when they were losing, that they had good running backs and a good offensive line, and if the coaches could figure out a way to just kind of narrow it down to use what they do well, you could see the Eagles doing well, and you've seen that. And same thing with the Giants, and maybe a new play caller here um, is going to make a difference, but they have weapons, and if their coaches can figure out a way to run a quick game, take the pressure off that offensive line, and use those weapons to their advantage, they can probably be a dangerous offense. So one reason they're not such a dangerous offense, Mosh, is their offensive line's hideous. So yeah. my question with that is, because they don't have a good offensive line, does John Gannon say, I don't need to blitz as much because we should win up front? Yeah, and again, the Darius Slave part comes into question. If he's not out there, then I very I doubt Jonathan Gannon's going to blitz a whole lot because he's probably going to be want to protect uh, Zach McPherson as much as possible. And that might not be the right decision. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying it seems that when Slay is off the field yeah. that he gets really, really timid with what he wants to do. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I would like to think that he, he would force the issue. But again, this is a team that does have weapons. And I, I'll, I'll say this, and if I, if I wind up being wrong about this, that's fine. I've watched the Giants a couple times this year. I do sometimes think their offensive line is not as horrendous as it's been um, called, I think that the play calling and the ability, like the, the, like Daniel Jones rolling right and throwing left to a to a fat guy, McClendon, <laughs> is that wasn't on the offensive line, right? I mean, he just he was he was rolled in, rolled out into the place where the pressure was coming from. So I, I think a different perspective um, and maybe a, some different play calls could make this offense look better than it is. Maybe it's not going to be a twenty eight to thirty point per game offense, but better than what you've seen. Well, Bob Papa actually said that. I mean, he said, we were mystified sometimes that you're in certain personnel groupings at certain parts of the field thinking, why are these guys in the game and not other guys? So, obviously, they had a lot of questions as to the way. I don't know that Freddie Kitchens is going to come in and fix that, but one thing we know about Kitchens is as the offensive coordinator, they liked him enough to give him the head coaching job. It was as the head coach that he wasn't very good. (laughs) <laughs> That's correct. If I'm not mistaken, the year before is when Baker Mayfield was a rookie and actually had a pretty good year. I mean, well, they, they, looked, they, I mean liked, I know that... they liked him and Mayfield together so much, they made him the head coach. Exactly, exactly. Oh, look, I think, I think there's going to be a difference. I really do. I'm not saying the Giants are definitely winning this game. I'm, I'm just saying I think they're going to show you. That plus, plus, now you have the element of surprise. You don't exactly know how they're going to try to come and hit you. So you might be timid from a defensive coordinator standpoint just because they might be doing some looks that, you know, they talk about the unscouted looks all the time. That might be happening a lot. So I do see this being kind of a, a chess or a checkers yeah. type of match, and it probably the game's probably going to take a little bit to get settled out. I can see the first two quarters being very uh, wacky. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Giants uh, defensively. Let's uh, kind of look. You know, we talked about the run game here, but – Jalen Hurts, he's obviously the X factor here. And is this a game where the Giants, it's almost coming to the point now, how are these teams going to start defending Hurts? What are they going to try to do? Do the Giants have somebody that can, you used to use the word spy a lot, right? Do they have that type of uh, personnel? Well, the Giants do have some some decent athletes in the secondary, uh, more so probably in the secondary than they do 
at linebacker. Uh, the kid from Alabama, Xavier McKinney, is pretty decent. I know their nickel corner has played pretty well for them, who's uh, Darnay Holmes. Um, so any one of those guys can be, you know, I don't think they're averse to playing those three safety packages. Julian Love has been on the field. So they'll probably try to do something to keep, uh, keep an eye on them. Uh, I told you the Saints clearly adjusted their pass rush. They did not let their, their defensive ends get all the way upfield because they were afraid of, of Hertz kind of breaking out of the pocket and making and doing damage. So what happens? He does damage by running inside the pocket, <laughs> like on that last touchdown run. He is a difficult puzzle to solve right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the beauty of, of when you're doing something well. Everybody's always going to start to look to take it out, and, out, and yeah, we'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny you say that. It's, you know, um, th- this is uh, – we talked yesterday about what took them so long to figure this out. You wonder if Hertz had any input on this. Like, was at some point was he saying, hey, guys, you might want to use me a little differently? Or does he just kind of, hey, the coaches are the coaches? Yeah, I suspect that he has not. You know, I mean, again, he he's not really thrilled with the idea that this has become a run, a labeled as a run heavy run first team. So, um, but I think he would he does have to en- appreciate the fact that because they are just like the Ravens do, they're able to use the quarterback run and catch teams completely off guard or off balance because of it. So that part he has to be appreciative of. I don't know if he went to the coaching staff and lobbied for it. Yeah, uh, but I think it's been a good byproduct of it, right? Because I mean, the the reason I, I asked it in that way, it's almost because it's such a drastic change, you know? Like, yeah. you went from they ran the ball three times in a game to fifty times almost in a game. I mean, that's as drastic <laughs> as you could get. So you wonder, like, I don't know, did Sirianni just say, "Hey, if we're going to run it good, I'm just going to keep doing it," or did was he? Did the quarterback say, look, we could do it. Let's do it. Like, don't worry about me. Yeah, no, I, th- I still think, like, if you go back to, um, which game was it? The Chargers game. They had ran the ball so well against the Lions. And even in the Chargers game, they tried to come out and throw the ball more so than run it. And um, Jalen had a t- kind of a difficult first half. And then they just said, forget it. We're going to go back to running it. <laughs> so, And then in the Denver game, they diversified their run. I feel like that they did the right thing in saying we're not just going to go downhill under center an entire game. Everybody's getting preparing for that, so we're going to spread it out. And they did allow. I thought the, the first half, I mean, the running numbers are great because not only are they running a lot, but they're getting some good chunk runs. So the it's a lot of rushing yards in general. But, you know, Jalen threw the ball well in the first half. It's just in the second half they were up so much that he only had to throw three passes. But, you know, as I keep saying, I, I know that they are anticipating – the day, the game, where they're going to be, get, have their run game tripped up a little bit and they're going to have to have plan B ready. All right, Jeff Mosher, of course, from the Inside the Birds podcast. Uh, we've got uh, the Eagles and the Giants this Sunday. And obviously, uh, Eagles win. They would be 6-6. Six and six. The Giants have got all sorts of problems. Their season is essentially, I mean, they're in this thing kind of, I guess, but uh, they're certainly behind the eight ball. Um, Philadelphia half game out. So this is a big game for Philly, and uh, let's kind of get your crystal ball on what you see. I know it's early in the week. Ooh, it's Wednesday, early. but we're off a couple days here. So how's this game going on on Sunday? I, I'm wrestling with it because I'm a law of averages guy, right? And it's not like the Eagles have won five in a row. I mean, it's only two in a row, but it is three out of four. It the is, Giants... By the way, it is 20 of the last 25. Wow. 80%. Wait, the Eagles... Who's that? The, e- the Eagles have won 20 of the last 25 games, including 10 and 3 in games uh, away dating back to 2008. Oh, you're talking about against the Giants. Okay, I was yes. like, what, 20 out of 25? Where did that come from? Yeah, wow, that's uh, that's pretty impressive there, and that just goes to show you why the Giants have been so awful for the last almost six, seven years now. Um, 10 and 3 I, 10, in New York, I, by the way. Yeah, I, I have a sneaky suspicion the Gi- and because of the, the the change that they're making, that the Giants are going to come out on top here, like in a in a wild, wacky game, like a twenty six twenty three type of win. But I I, could, I might change that like three times before uh, our pregame show on Sunday. So that's just I'm just kind of feeling that right now. All right. Listen, well, I I know and and you know what's going to be if the Eagles lose, like the everybody's going to say that you know someone's got to get fired. It's the worst thing in the world. The, the the Giants can win this game. I mean, two weeks ago they beat the Raiders and the Eagles got clobbered by the Raiders. So I mean, you know how you more than anyone talk about the weak to weakness 
of the NFL. So it's not the worst thing in the world if the Eagles lose this game. It, it's all part of the growing and the maturing of this team. Not going to win every game. Yeah, uh, and by the way, you know that's not going to be me. I'm the guy when they lost to the Dolphins a couple of years ago and said, look, yep. you're going to lose a game. They're, go- uh, they're going to lose one of these games that they're not expected or, you know, Vegas says. They're, they're going to lose one of them. It might be Giants. I don't think it's going to be the Jets. Right. Uh, and I say it, I don't think it's going to be the Jets. The Jets' run defense is really bad. Uh, they're, well, Washington- they're everything is really bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Washington is going to be interesting. We'll see where that happens. I think happens. that's the it, toughest game. Yeah, I think Washington's probably better than the Giants right now. Um, so if the Eagles were playing Washington, I'd, I'd, you know, it might almost pick them. But, um, yeah, yeah, I just think that, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, man. It could be – I well, wouldn't be surprised if anything happens. The area that the Giants stink in is the one where the Eagles take advantage of you, and that's when you have a bad offensive line. And yep. I see Hargrave and Fletcher – I mean, Will Hernandez is the worst-rated guard in all of football. He's 191 out of 191, which I'm surprised by. I thought that was, like, a good pick by them and said, man, because they got Thomas and Hernandez in that draft. You're thinking, wow, they, they really went after the line and fixed this thing. They need Howie Roseman to draft the lineman for them. Yeah, they absolutely do. Sure. Um, yeah, the, I, and we'll see. We'll see if this change in play calling and in structure of their offense – matters and makes their offensive line look a little bit better than it, than it is or than it's shown gotcha. so far. Yeah. All right. Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN. Jeff Mosher, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, you guys are going to be doing the show, I imagine, Sunday, right? We will be. We will be there. The 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on the Inside the Birds YouTube channel. It's uh, Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, Jason Yvonne, Quint Michael, Greg Cosell. It's a great show to get you ready for the Eagles and the Giants and, of course, you can hear the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, Mosh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Same to you, Mike. Have a great one. All right, man. There's uh, Mosh. Good stuff. Football at 4 brought to you by Caesars Entertainment Group of Atlantic City. Come experience the ultimate sports destinations all season long. At Wild Wild West, Tropicana, Harris Resort, Atlantic City. Book your game day experience at Caesars.com.